to you now, Carl Rove, Fox News contributor and former White House deputy chief of staff under President George W. Bush. So they got together uh, and decided that they should raise the spending caps by almost between 300 and 400 billion dollars. And that was, I, I think, a pretty easy thing for them to come to an agreement on, Carl, on the Senate side. Well, it is because remember, caps are not appropriations, and uh, they, uh, they 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 actually originally the Democrats said if for every dollar you increase in defense caps, you need to increase in, def in the non-discretion or excuse me non-defense. Here's what the Senate is: it's 80 billion dollars more to defense. Uh, that right now defense is at 549. This would carry it to 629. And then on non-defense, it would increase it by 63 billion. It's now at about 516 billion. That would carry it to 579, and it would do that this year and next year. So, in other words, 80 billion dollars this year for defense, 80 billion dollars more for defense next year. But again, that's a ceiling. That's not the appropriation. Same on non-defense: 63 billion dollars more this year, 63 billion dollars more next year. And again, that's a that's that's the that's the authorization. It's not the appropriation. This bill would also raise the debt ceiling so that it's not voted on again until after this election. And then it would fill up the FEMA, the, the Federal Emergency Management Agency pot, which has now run out of money with about $80 billion for disaster relief. That money would sit there until it was needed over the course of the next several years. By comparison, Martha, the House bill that they're working on increases defense spending by $35 billion this year from 549 to 584 but does not increase non-defense to spending, doesn't do anything about the debt ceiling, and doesn't do anything yeah. about filling FEMA. But, so there are big you know, differences I, I mean, between I the two chambers. I think Jim Jordan speaks chambers. probably for many Republicans out there. I think a lot of people thought when yep. they sent all these Republicans to Washington, including a president, that there might be some discussion when you raise these caps about places where you could cut spending. Because uh, I think everybody well, knows that there remember. are indeed places where you can cut spending. I, I know this is just, but you're, you're saying this is just the, the budget in, in a sense, right? This is, you can spend it's it to the this budget. amount. It's the budget. It's, I mean, it's the budget framework. They're and the spend question it to that is, amount. yeah, the question is, is, they never is, don't. uh, it, well, they don't. Well, they do sometimes, but the question is: is what is what is the long game here? My sense is is that they want to get they want to get the budget deal done, get the debt ceiling out of the way, clear the deck, so to speak, and then there will be a battle. Let's not kid ourselves. There will be a battle this year and next year about whether or not they actually do increase defense spending by eighty billion dollars and increase. Uh, uh, non-defense spending by 63. There will be a continuing battle over this. This is just simply the, the framework, not the actual appropriation bills gotcha. themselves. You know, I, I want to show just to Nancy Pelosi for a moment and the stance that she took today, a very strong stance. She spent many hours out there arguing that she wants uh, to the Dreamers to be allowed to stay in the country as part of this bill, and she feels, I think, betrayed by the deal that, that Ch Chuck Schumer struck on the Senate side. But remember, uh, when, when this happened, when she was basically overrun by Dreamer protesters when she was speaking in San Francisco not that long ago. You've asked some questions. You've asked some questions. You've asked some questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your vision. No, I want to. No, you've asked questions. You've asked questions. You have spoken. I don't think she forgot that moment, Carl. In fact, the president reminded her of it just the other day, and that may have been some of the motivation for what we saw today. Well, also, the motivation might be in part that she has a caucus that is demanding action on DACA and feels betrayed by the idea of separating these two. Mm -hmm. They've got their own problem with shut down itis. Uh, they thought that in the House that shutting down the government by demanding that no spending bill be passed without a DACA fix in it was good politics and good policy, and it was neither. What's ironic is they got a better shot at getting a DACA fix and more comprehensive immigration if they clear the decks of the budget and then focus on that, because clearly President uh, Trump has laid out a deal there. He said, I will give a not, not yeah. uh, a path to citizenship to, to 800,000, 700,000 who filed. I'll give it to a million eight, but we got to find a way to do something on border security that will and and reforming the, some of these uh, immigration laws like I would like to have it done. So they got a chance to get this done if they're willing to negotiate yeah. and willing to separate these two. And what's well, interesting to me is her people were participating in all of these discussions on the Senate side as were House Republicans. And somehow or another, something happened today to cause her to walk away from it, at least temporarily. But this can't pass without a number of Democrats voting for it in the House. What, what, before I let you go quickly, what, what did you think about the president saying, you know, I'd love a shot 
shut down. I want border security. I want to protect the country from MS-13 and other groups. And look, I'd be happy to shut the government down over that. Look, 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 a couple of weeks ago, he learned a very valuable lesson. When Chuck Schumer threatened to shut down the government, crying Chuck Schumer, as the president called him, the Schumer shutdown, the Democrats suffered. The president rose in the polls. The American people said, we don't want the government shut down. I think it's a mistake for the president to do that again this time. He's got, he's got, uh, he's, he's, he's on a good move right now, but he keeps getting in front of himself and calling for a shutdown that he criticized two weeks ago is not going to advance his cause. Carl Rove, always good to see you, sir. Thank you, Carl.